Hi guys, this is Don. I wanted to take a, a couple of minutes here, probably more than a couple of minutes, to go over a probability problem. One of the, your classmates uh, asked about this problem. And it, it uh, can be deceptively simple or it can, it can blow your mind. So uh, let's look at it. Uh, we're told that the probability that a person has B plus blood is 12%. Uh, five unrelated people are selected and they want to answer these questions. They want to know the probability that all five have type B plus. They want to know the probability that none of the five have B plus and the probability that at least one of the five has B plus. And then final question, which of these are unusual? And uh, just we'll talk about that last part real quickly. For this part of the uh, course, before we get into the inference and hypothesis test, if we have a probability of an event less than or equal to 0.05, we're going to call that unusual. So if any of these probabilities comes out to be less than 0.05, we're going to say it's unusual. Okay, I have a spreadsheet here set up and I like to take the time when I'm working on problems, homework problems or any problems, to go ahead and try to organize my spreadsheet uh, in the chance that I might have an opportunity to reuse it uh, later on, either on another homework problem or uh, a quiz or an exam. And what I do, I, I label things. In cells where I'm inputting data, I color blue output sales where I'm calculating something from the data I input I color yellow and uh, that's kind of the theme here you can see where I put in data and where I calculate things and I've got a lot on here and I'll walk us through what's on here first thing I did uh, from the problem the probability of getting the B plus and I just put B but the, but the uh, B plus blood was 12% or 0.12. When we start working with probability in Excel and math, we need to convert that to uh, decimals. We had an N of 5. That was our sample of 5 people. The first question was, what's the probability of giving, getting all f of all 5 people having the B positive blood? And the way to get that um, is, first of all, we need to know, are these dependent or independent uh, samples and in this case we've got five individuals they're not related it said so if one person has B positive that doesn't have any impact on whether the next person or the next person or the next person has B positive so they're independent and that means that even though we've got a conditional if the first person is B positive uh, what is the uh, probability of the second person getting B positive? That's the, that uh, uh, with the vertical bar we use for the uh, conditional. But for conditional, when we have independent events, then we just multiply them together. And we can string together as many as we need. In this case, we would have five in a row. We would have a uh, B positive, B positive, B positive, B positive, B positive. So that would be that 12%, percent point one two multiplied by itself five times. Or a shortcut there would be that value in B1, cell B1, raised to the fifth power. And that's what I did there. We got a 0 .00025. The next question was, what is the probability that none of the five have uh, B positive blood? Well, the, the probability of not having B positive is the complement of having B positive. So that would be 1 minus the 0.12, or in Excel, it would be 1 minus B1 or 0.88. And the probability of none of the five having B positive would again be uh, each one of those probabilities multiplied by the next four. B 
uh, 5, which is this 0.88 times B5 times B5 times B5 times B5, our B5 raised to the fifth power gives us 0.528 for that probability. The third part of the question says, what is the probability that at least one of the five has B positive blood? And if you think about that, there's two ways of thinking about it. First of all, I write it down in a math. That's the probability of N, the, the number of, uh, that should be small N. I'll have to correct that in my spreadsheet. Uh, greater than or equal to one. I'm notice that's the probability of one person out of the five, two people out of the five, three people, four people, or all five people. What's the probability of that is really the sum of each of those probabilities. So that is again, deceptively straightforward. A quick way of doing it is just to remember that we, we are, can work with complements. If at least one is B positive, that means the probability is the complement of none being B positive. So we can subtract one minus B6, the probability of none of the five being B positive is 0.528. One minus 0.528 is 0.473. So that's the probability of at least one person having B positive. Okay, well, let's dig into this a bit. We got to think about it again if you really need to understand probability. Let's look over here in this part of the spreadsheet. There's only one way to get all five B positives, isn't there? That's B, B positive, B positive, B positive, B positive, B positive. Only one way. Um, and there's only one way to get all five not B positives. Not B positive, not B positive, not B positive, not B positive. So you've, you're really only one way to get zero and only one way to get all five. But once you start looking at how many ways can I get one person to have B positive out of the five? Well, we can have the first person we test have B positive and the other four not. We can have the second person we test have B positive and the other four not. We can have the third person we test, fourth person we test, or fifth person we test be positive. So there are five ways that we can get one person out of the five uh, to have be positive because we're testing people, then the order counts. Um, so we could go through and do that for each one of these, but it gets very tedious and cumbersome. How many ways can you get two out of five? Well, there's B positive, B positive, and three ends, B, no, B, so forth. But you would keep going and keep going. How many is that? Well, we can make use of combinations in this case to help us do this calculation. The number of ways that five people can be taken in at a time, we can use the combine function in Excel uh, to help us calculate that. And what I did here, I'm going to click on that cell. You can see I put in the combine function. If you just start typing equal, com, bind, and then click on that, it'll enter that for you. And then the arguments are the number of items, which is five, and how many at a time. And I put in G8 just to make it um, something that I could copy down. If you go over here, I put in a column with the values of n, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and I take my formula there, combination of 5, G8, and drag that down, just copy it down, and so I've got the number of ways that we can get 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And then I need the probability of getting that. And here we, it, this, is, this is the, what's deceptively simple and where you'll trip on, the probability of getting one out of five is equal to 
B1, which is one person gets B positive, raised or times four people not having it, and that gives us that probability. To get two, this way I just illustrated it, that's that 0.12 times 0.12 times 0.88 times 0.88 times 0.88. So I've gotten the probabilities for each of those calculated. And then all I have to do is to sum those up. They're multiply them. The number of ways times the probability gives me those values. And that's just the formula is H8, which is that probability times the number of ways you can get that probability gives you the total probability uh, for those five different combinations and so forth. And that gives us the answer 40.473 again, which is the same as this answer over here. I just wanted you to understand a little more uh, how to calculate those because on some problems they won't make it easy by giving us a um, uh, allowing us to use the complement. Okay, I know this video is, is getting long, but I think it's useful. And I want to give you some insight into something that's coming up. The type of problem we just discussed is really what is known as a binomial experiment. And we will look at these a little bit later in the course. And the reason I'm bringing this up is that when you get into working problems on quizzes and homework, um, you can make those go a whole lot faster if you use the binomial uh, experiment of binomial distribution.